What strange times we're living in. Oh God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for our eternal life and our eternal inheritance with Christ. We are so grateful, Lord. We can come together like this and go after the deeper things that you asked us to go after. And that we can all be equipped to do what you've called us to do that signs, wonders, and miracles would follow us as we follow off to you. And I think, you Lord, that you've got great and mighty things planned for us as a fellowship. And we can pray and watch, always to escape the things that are coming across this world. So, we, Lord, we just come before you now. We just thank you that we can enter your courts with thanksgiving in our hearts. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and take us over and do whatever it is that's necessary with us to get us where you need us to be this day. In the almighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I think the main thing here is um, we're supposed to be imitating God. Our, our Bible tells us we're supposed to be imitating God. Um, John the Baptist said that he was unfit to even untie the shoestrings, the, the sandals that Jesus wore, if you recall. And, and Jesus is telling us how to, to, to walk now in the same shoes. He said, this is greater thing shall you do. So he's like absolutely telling us we've got to do walk in his shoes now. Um, we read that in... in um, In John one twenty seven, he it is who is coming after me is before me whose shoe latches are not worthy to unloose. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. What an amazing thing! So, so Jesus came to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. And many of us are walking about thinking about that we're not worthy. I mean, no matter what congregation somebody's preaching at the smallest, fill with people that don't think they're worthy. And Jesus paid such a very high price to make us worthy. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to get on to the assignments. Yeah. And keep that joy. Keep that holy joy. I mean, when you value something, it, it's uh, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Anybody ever buy something and you know, kind of thought you were getting a deal and it wasn't what you thought in the end? Um, but the Lord must think you're, you're worth a lot more than you realize. And I think about what he paid for us. So when the devil tells you that you're not worth it, well, remember, the Lord said you are. Yeah. You are worth it. Because all the devil does is lie. Mm -hmm. He's such, and that's why he's a great deceiver. Tricks, he's the right? master of deception. I like what our Native American Indian friends tell us to call him the great trickster. But let us be overcomers instead of struggling with various issues and all those voices that are going on in your head. I think it's really important that we get up every morning and say, I shall not die. I shall live and proclaim the gospel. Amen? So it's time to turn their frown upside down. <laughs> I mean, how, how exciting Andy comes in with a testimony like we had this morning. Blind eyes sing again. Hallelujah. You know, another thing is, is, is making proclamations and, and positive confessions that's really important for our minds to stay healthy. Um, Romans 4.17, you're calling things as not as, as if they were. 
And I, I, I think the world can't understand it. It doesn't matter right now. God understands it. So you need to understand it and you need to do it. And, and I know there's issues in everybody's life that's here and everybody's listening online. There's things going on in your life that you want to be different. And all things are possible with God. We are saying that this morning. All things are possible. So it doesn't really matter. We put our complete trust in Him because He made you worthy. And He'll take care of the details. Amen? Amen. So one of the main reasons I think the so many saints and churches are not walking in the supernatural power that they're truly is because they don't know who they are. If you don't know who you are, then you, you have an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. you know, today we, we've got a whole agenda launched in these end times of people that don't know who they are. They're confused. And then you've got scientists doing all sorts of experimentations, um, doing some very strange things. Um, I don't really want to put it on tape, so <laughs> I don't want to talk about it right now, but there's some very odd things going on. And, and we're supposed to be walking in the supernatural power of the Lord. No matter what the world's doing, because Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, we walk by faith, not by sight. And Jesus already paid for our healing. He paid pay for blessing. I mean, healing and blessings belong to you because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Yeah. And then when Dr. Roger Sepp comes, he's going to really bring that message home. He bore your pain. He carried your sorrows. He was by scourging. You were healed. It says um, in Isaiah 35, 10, And the ransom of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads, and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. So it seems to me often we, we walk according to how we feel instead of how the Lord said we actually told us about. Why, why would we just go with feelings? We need to overcome feelings. They change all the time. It says in Hebrews 2, um, sorry, Hebrews 12, 2, looking onto Jesus, what an amazing thing to do. Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So that's interesting to read that and to study that and to meditate on that because the, that very high price that Jesus endured and paid for the cross, it was a joy. It says it was a joy. Jesus says it. It was a joy for him to, to suffer for us. Even though he knew at the last minute, he, he, asked, he asked the Lord, well, is there another way we can do this? <laughs> Father, is there another way we can, we can overcome? We can do all things through him that strengthens us. Amen? Amen. So it seems it's not... Uh, not if, if that's not happened, you know, it, it ought to be happening. If things aren't happening the way they should be happening, then sometimes... It's because maybe we're believing the lies of the devil instead of the Holy Word of God. As we, we enter in this final age, we're seeing some, some very odd things happening. And, and so people, you know, it's maybe time to take a leap of faith, stepping out of your comfort zone. Maybe you want to step out of the comfort zone. It's not comfortable to step out of your comfort zone. Mm, that's right. <laughs> but that's what we're called to do. God is moving, and, 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 and I want to be part of that. I want you to be part of that. So we're going to do this together. Um, in Ephesians 2, it says, um, in Ephesians 2, 4, that God, whose rich in mercy, for his great love wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Are you feeling you're sitting in heavenly places right now? <laughs> it says so. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. So this is a spiritual resurrection from death and from sins and iniquities. And it's just as definite and complete as physical resurrection. 
And eternity in the ages that come will be made up of time as we know it now, as we count it by seconds and minutes and, and hours and days and weeks and months and years. I mean, ages, because it says right here, ages upon ages. So, and then we look at 2 Corinthians 5, 7, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And all things of God has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, who has given us the ministry of reconciliation. This is what we're supposed to do every day of our life. And as we're, we're, we're reconciled to the Lord Jesus, we need to also be reconciled to others, because we're ministers of reconciliation. Everybody that belongs to Christ is. And one of the first things I think we need to grab hold of is to deal with the spirit of fear. That spirit of stress and anxiety, because there's an invisible spirit of fear, it, it tears away at everybody. It tears at your body's systems. And it all starts where? In the thought life. And, and stress has become epidemic today. I mean, I don't know if they had that kind of stress before the modern inventions of, you know, telecommunications and all that they may have, but it doesn't appear that when you read history, you don't really see it the way it, today it's an epidemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not the same as it was, and we, we can see this historically. But stress has be, become so epidemic, it, it's become a big business, and, and it's such a big business for the New Agers and the psychologist and, and all their methods to attempt to, to, to um, reduce stress. Mm -hmm. And they've got workshops, and they've got relaxation CDs and MP3s you can listen to. And, and researchers warning that um, releasing, you know, these stress chemicals into your body, when, when, you, when you're dealing with the spirit of fear, fear you, 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 you're, you're releasing chemicals into your body. And it seems it's more to do with chemicals that are simply, you know, I don't really think I would say you know, we hear about stress chemicals in your body. I don't think it's really that much of a matter. It's really it's simply you're overflowing and, and overproducing them. It's a, God put you in balance. But when we, when we don't stay within God's parameters and holiness, then we're causing an imbalance from wrong qualities and quantities because we don't always discern from these invisible spirits. Because there's invisible things working on our life. One of the most powerful tools that the Lord's given us is the power to think and to choose. And to come boldly into the throne room any time, day and night. Mm -hmm. Lord, I've got to talk to you right now. I know you're busy you running the universe, but I need to talk to you right now. And what does he do? Okay. He goes, come on. Let's talk. Mm -hmm. Right? Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly Onto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the, in, in, up to help in the time of need. So when we hear somebody say they're feeling stressed, anybody hear that lately? Yep. Oh, I'm just so stressed. They go around telling you they're stressed. Then, then, then their condition to think, so, you know, you, you are conditioned to think something negative. Every time somebody tells me, oh, Pastor, I'm so stressed. Can, can I talk to you? I'm so stressed. And, and so it's almost an automatic response in today's world that we think that's something negative. But it's not always absolutely something negative. Because let's just talk about here. We've got different stages of stress. Science established, we've got three main stages. You've got the um, alarm stage, you've got the um, uh, resistance stage, and then you've got the exhaustion stage. However, you experience all three stages. You know, remember Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage. <laughs> and all the men and women really play us. <laughs> they have their exorcists and entrances. Mm -hmm. yes. one, one, one person plays many parts, right? So, yeah. um, <laughs> so the part you play, it, 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 you know, you're supposed to play the part of a saint. <laughs> Stay calm and carry on. So again, you, you can't control all the world events. I mean, I look at the, the you know the morning news. People send me messages all over the place. I mean, it's just it's just absolutely amazing to me what's going on. Um, you know, the church is just crumbling in, in, in Europe. 
that the foundation of the church is just common and good. Um, they're, they're voting in things that just go absolutely contrary to the word of God. I've got a message how the Scottish church went off the wrong way again today. Mm. We can't control the world events and circumstances very often, can we? But we can learn to control and practice how we're going to react to them in a godly way. So what we're thinking actually changes our brain. How many of you know that now? What you're thinking is, is physically changing things right now in your brain, and that's going to have a great impact on all our body parts and, and our internal organs are going to change with the thought life. So some stress at the long stage actually could be okay, because it helps you accomplish things that you need to accomplish, you know? A little bit of stress, like, oh, I just saw my neighbor stressing about doing her laundry, you know? Right. It's got a little bit of stress. Well, it's just going to motivate it a little bit. That's okay, because it's otherwise she wouldn't get it done. Maybe you know, she's like too peaceful. So a little bit, that's okay. It, it's the way God designed us. But when we cross over in the next stages, it becomes problematic. So stress is sort of. I think stress is kind of like an allergy. Think about it. It's really kind of fear and stress and anxiety. They're, they're kind of like an allergy. Um, even though that's what's behind allergies. But they're, they're, they're actually good, kind of um, a, a parable, make it into an, al an analogy here, because um, it's, it's that fear that God didn't give us. Um, you know, when, once that happens, when, 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 you, when you merge your thoughts with ungodly fear and stress, the, the, the merest imitation of stress can trigger a cascade of chemicals that, 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 that that react through your brain and, and then your body is going to be assaulted with it. And you're going to have an overproduction of stress chemicals. So your, your body, what, like let's talk about allergies. Um, your body produces cortisol and you need some cortisol. People think, no, cortisol is so bad. No, you have to have some. It's a really good thing. It's just when you get an over secretion, you're in trouble. So, so your body produces cortisol the, the, to um, <clears throat> suppress things like the inflammatory response when you get an attack from an allergy. Most people can, you know, can respond that way. And an allergy is something that God didn't design you with. So, so cortisol is actually a steroid hormone and it's secreted by the adrenal cortex. So an allergy is really, when you come down to the essence of it, it's a hypersensitive reaction to any antigen, meaning it's, it's some substance that your body's reacting to that it should normally not react to because God made us compatible with everything in the world. I'm not sure about chemtrails, but I, I believe, you know, supernaturally God will get us through the end as well. Amen. So you got these complex proteins and they're produced by the B lymphocytes and, and, and they, they respond to any kind of antigen. And so it's my personal observation that when, when you find somebody that's suffering <clears throat> with a spirit of self-pity, you often find them suffering with allergies. Coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so we keep the minds of, instead of the Lord. I mean, you got to be careful because, you know, most people are going like, this, this is not the mind of the Lord to go. You never would hear Jesus go, well, why is that happening to me? I mean, I don't understand. But why is this going on? You never see that in Scripture. And yet you see Christians running around going, why is this happening to me? You know, you're pounding away at, at, at the devil. You're trying to lead people to Christ. You're praying for the sick. You're laying hands on the sick. They're recovering. And then sometimes you get hit back and you go, what was that for? We're in a real war. At least you forget. You know, we're all a work in progress. We've got to keep practicing to, you know, to overcome. We're supposed to be overcomers. In James 1, 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally and unbraideth not, and it shall be given. We say in, in, in Proverbs 3, 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct his paths. So saying, why is this happening to me? Why is all these things? Well, that, that's not acknowledging God in all things, is it? In, in Philippians 4.19, it's, um, wow, what an, an amazing statement. That my God shall supply all your needs. That doesn't exclude anything. That my God shall 
supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now unto God and the Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So what, what and how we are thinking is vital to blessings and health. Our God answers prayers, and so we got to go over the Word of God over and over and over, you know. Amen. Especially, you know, when you have to deal with naysayers and doomsdayers and doubters. I mean, the world's surrounded with this stuff. Wherever you leave this room, there's going to be people, you know, going to try to come with spirits of doubt and unbelief. So stress is really simply the spirit of fear that's lying to you. And when we entertain a toxic, a toxic thought, what happens? It causes a chemical changes in, in your body, it reacts to it. And our body goes into a, nev in, a, a negative response and we continue entertaining toxic, fearful thinking. Let me take you to this scripture. You know I'm going to take you to several. Because we never want to be stingy with scriptures. Proverbs 25, 28. This is powerful. He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that's broken down and without, without walls. So back when this was written, think about it, cities were kind of built like fortresses. And if the walls came down, the enemy could enter in and cause all sorts of trouble. Animals can wander in. They can leave a mess anywhere they like. I'm having a couple horses. I, I have to deal with a mess every morning now. I go, can you guys like hang outside for a while? Do you have to keep coming in the stall to do this? So I'm thinking about this. You know, what about the holy temple? When you when when you open up and, and you don't rule over your thought life, it's like the walls are broken down, and then. You know, you can't, you have no command over yourself. Your, your, your desires and your passions, it says you give the enemy of our souls, you know, freedom. And then Satan, you know, drags you into every sin, every snare, every temptation. That's what he does. So when you enter into stage two and three of, of the stress, it, it's a similar thing happening. Because, see, every cell in your body, if it's not probably taken care of, it's exposed, just like a city is not properly taken care of. But the wall's broken down. Because every toxic thought that we continue to entertain causes our bodies to be susceptible to all manner of sicknesses and diseases and depression, and the list goes on and on, doesn't it? So when you listen to the lies of the enemy, and enter into some kind of agreement, what happens in your body responds because that spirit of fear begins to do what? It builds a stronghold. A stronghold in your mind. So it can cause your heart to be, you know, uh, the, 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 the increase and, and it releases all sorts of chemicals and then you feel beaten down. If you're ever like, you know, you're driving somewhere and, and all of a sudden you see flashing lights behind you and it knows it's a police car telling you to pull over. What does that do? Does that surge chemicals through your body? So you need to overcome that as well. So every cell in our body begins to move in, in, out of alignment, you know, with the way that God wanted it to be, with the way he intended it. And then, you know, you, you lose that supernatural peace that you're supposed to be walking in, supposed to be living in. Uh, Jesus says in John 14, 27, Peace, I live with you. Well, he's supernatural. Everything God does is supernatural. It's supernatural peace, right? Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. So the psychologists and the New Agers and whatever else they're propagating, they can't give you real peace, they can't give you supernatural peace, it's a false peace or the government, or anybody else, you know. Um, but God gives you supernatural peace. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So we need to stay in the word of God, so the word of God stays in us. So we need to take spiritual inventory and get back into agreement with what God has said. And even if we're not seeing immediate results, 
I mean, some days I might feel more saved than other days. I, I woke up feeling very saved this, this morning. Yesterday I wasn't so sure. But today I'm feeling very saved. Um, I'm feeling very sanctified right now. Yesterday maybe I wasn't. The day before I was. This is, you know, things change, right? So it doesn't matter. I know what the word of God says. So whether I wake up feeling saved and sanctified or not, that doesn't change the word of God. It changes me. The Lord said, meditate on His word, and it would bring healing to all our flesh, right? Proverbs 4, 22, for they are life unto those that find them in health to all their flesh. Every cell, every internal organ, every, everything that's going on in you, right? God's word has not changed, it shall change us. So we need to walk in holiness. Because we make, when we make wrong choices, we release toxic chemicals. And that causes our body to go into what? Toxicity. Right? Yep. Uh, research is showing 80 to 95 percent, I think it's higher, 80 to 95 percent, it could be a little bit higher than 95 percent. All sicknesses and all diseases, physical, mental, emotional, begin where? And, and our thought life, David's right. So we need to go after the root issue. I mean, when we first moved into our little ranch farm, whatever you call it, um, little horse farm, there was a, a tree, I, and I never, I never um, used a, um, one of those power saws, what do you call those chainsaws? My neighbor gave me one because there was this tree that was in the way. He gave me a lot of instructions with it too. <laughs> and so I took that tree down, you know, and it was kind of fun. I was like, um, I'm on the jig, you know, I had a, had a great time. <laughs> and, uh, and then an the amazing thing happened. The tree started growing back the next year. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wait a minute, I, I chopped it down. And well, now I realize you've got to dig it up by the root. Ooh. Oh, that went fine. Okay, so did I drive my point home here? Yep. If, um, so if all that's going on, then the root issues, we've got to go up to the root issues and the issues of our life. Second Corinthians 10.3 For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the putting down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought of 30,000 to 70,000 thoughts a day to the beings of Christ. So the first stage of stress, which is called the alarm stage, you know, we, we understand that th this is just it's still in the normal range. It's okay. You know, and it helps you get stuff done sometimes. But we're, but we're always building memories. We're doing that right now. It take, takes up real estate in our, in our, in our brain. When we're building memories, we, we can stay focused on whatsoever task is at hand. And if you're walking in, in a public place, you're entering in, in, in the, the stage. We, you, you can't help but walk into a public place and enter in the stage one of stress. Because you don't know what's going on around you, and the world's not safe. It hasn't been safe since Adam sinned. So it's a wee bit, you know, um, stage one when you're walking around. And, and you sense any danger, your nervous system immediately sends an emergency signal warning to your brain. And then all the different body parts and all the functions coordinate to, uh, to end, and, and they're, you, they're going to fight or flight. Now I see that so obviously with the horses, you know, they're, um, they're, they're getting on great and then all of a sudden, uh, and you don't see anything going on, but there's something invisible going on, then one pins his ears back and gets, you know, the alpha stance going like, Runs the other one off, you know, and then they make up. <laughs> um, it's so it's fight or flight. You know, I've been out on my horse many years, and, and, and something dangerous comes up. Um, an, an, an animal, put, you know, some kind of dog running after us or something. It's, it's fight or flight. And I had to actually teach my horse when I went through mounted police school to, to get into the fight mindset. So I, I've had experiences where dogs come running out and barking, yippy and yappy kind of dogs, you know, and they're going to take the horse, and instead we turn and attack them. And I charge the, the dog. Right. I mean, I, I, I love dogs, I've got a dog as well, but charge after, the, and the dog suddenly goes, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> and 
this was the wrong thing to chase after. This thing's like in huge and it's coming after me and then it runs off and then everything's over just like that. But so there's a fight or flight thing. Um, I've also been on you know runaway horses before. Yes. That's not fun. fun. Mm -hmm. They kind of bolt and go into fear and, yeah. and it's hard to bring them back under control. Yep. So <clears throat> it's the same thing that's happening with our bodies. So when you receive a higher level of energy in your limbs, you know, start working faster when you, you're, you're fearful, you're walking in the parking lot at night or something, um, there's a sense of danger, what's going to happen? And your body's going to respond to it. And your, your facial expressions, you know, might look fearful, uh, tense. Um, we can see that in people's facial expressions when we're looking at them now, right? Mm -hmm. It's a simple thing that somebody's, you know, to give a public um, address of any kind. It's, it's one of the most fearful things people can experience. Seeing musicians playing concerts, athletes, you know, focusing, they even though they're trained to do it, there's, there's a, a tension that comes in with it. But that's okay, it's still in the normal range, usually. But when you cross over, that's not so good. And then it goes toxic. And we witnessed that, you know, um, somebody uh, seeing an accident or something, something traumatic happens. That's not good, that, that brings you into stage two and three. That's not good. So obviously, the indication here is, is um, when you enter into a place like stage two or three of stress, it, it, it uh, leads to higher blood pressure issues. And, and you're, it, it's going to affect your indigestion. So the second stage of, of, of resistance <clears throat> is where the enemy really starts to work people over. Unless you learn how to practice staying good. Right? Because you lose your supernatural peace. And, you, and then you don't get any relief from that first stage of stress, but you start, you start to slowly, this, you, you realize you're losing energy. When you get in stage two, you, you, start, you start to feel like you're losing energy. And you start struggling, and that becomes toxic. And, and this is an invisible war that's going on. When you hear, you, you, you can hear yourself with the words that you're speaking, you know, you feel exasperated, you get impatient, you can just hear, people get in stage two, you, you, and there's sometimes, you know, I can't believe I just said that, well, why do you think you just said that? Because an invisible voice gave you an idea and you ran with it. See, in the most trivial matters, they'll, they'll say something snappy, they'll be a little snarly to the, the loved ones or friends, your body reacts, you know, and then they have trouble sleeping at night. So in essence, you know, you, there's, there's, a, there's a breakdown that's happening. And this is not the way God wants you to respond. And it leads to changes, define changes in your perceptions, in, in your physical and mentally, the way you're looking at things. So this affects what? Your behavior patterns. And then the evidence is that we see the indications of the levels where people send, you know, they, they, now they're feeling exhaustion, they're feeling weariness, they get anxious, and then they get, what, forgetful. Have you seen my car keys? I don't know where I put them, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the second stage is the stresses where we enter into, basically we're entering into a neurological, neurochemical chaos. This is not good for your brain, your, your brain or your body. So then you're having a harder time processing information. You ever try to talk to somebody when they're stressed? No. You want to give them some information? How many wives are trying to give the husbands a list of something they get from the, on an errand in the grocery store and they're, they're too stressed to process what they're saying, you know? They, they want milk and bread and eggs and they, they come back with linoleum and bricks or something. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have all these neurotransmitters they're causing hundreds of chemical reactions. There's like 1,400 of them that are known to date. And about 30 of different neurotransmitters that, that, um, that are working all at the same time. So when stage two is stress, is basically with a spirit of fear, you begin to, um, it's bringing you into a place where you make bad decisions. You can't make good decisions when you're stressed out. When you're listening to the spirit of fear, you cannot make a good decision. And keeping in mind, thoughts are real, with real substance, and they take up real estate in our brains. 
And then the third stage of stress is called exhaustion. <clears throat> this is where you, you stay in stage two for an extended period of time, too long, and, and then that spirit of fear is dragged you down. This is the final stage where exhaustion just covers over you. you now you're smothered and covered in exhaustion. This is bad. That's a bad habit when that happens. And it's toxic and it's going to take its toll on people. And the church is suffering because they don't know this information. So we need to go out and share this. And so there's things that are going on. See, deep in your subconscious mind, that's driving your conscious mind. The, the, the hidden things are actually driving your, your conscious part of your mind. So now you're feeling totally you know, tired, you're feeling drained, all your energy is going, and that means you're, you're feeling desperate. And now you're not living the glorified God. How can you glorify the life you live to Jesus when, when you're living like that? And when people continually stay at a level of toxicity, and then they wonder why diseases come. Why is the enemy messing with them? The enemy of your soul is able to, to, to do terrible things at this stage. Extreme complications, and you get heart diseases, and uh, high blood pressure, and ulcers, and cancers, and you name it. All those diseases that are written in the Merck's Manual. The Merck's Manual is a, is, a, is a guidebook to show you what the devil's been doing for thousands of years. Amen. So the longer you stay in, in, in a toxic place, the more damage the devil and his demons are able to do. They're just having a field day. But let's think about this. 2 Timothy 2.24, And the servant of the Lord, that's all of us that are Christians, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preventures, would give them repentance, the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So we get back into understanding and, and believing who you are in Christ, in your relationship with God, the Father, then you can recover yourself and you can break through from the devil's traps, the devil's snares. All those places he's caught you and trapped you, you can break free. You know, it's, it's like Popeye with some spinach, <laughs> Superman, you know, whatever, just break, break these bonds. I know why I'm in Christ, and, and free, hallelujah, because Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives us, supernatural peace. Mm. So let not your hearts be troubled, and don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when we make bad choices. We upset a very delicate chemical balance the Lord designed us with. We interrupt the flow of the Holy Spirit guiding and directing us. See, we're not, we're not here in these bodies just to look good. How many of you understand that? You're not here just to look good. Yeah. We're, we're here because we, we're made in, 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 in the image of the Lord himself. Right? To be able to recognize when we're not in alignment with, with the design that he has for us. When we're out of alignment with the Holy Spirit, we, we need to get a Holy Spirit adjustment. Mm -hmm. And that's something the chirocrops there can't do. Mm. <laughs> no matter how they try. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. So, oh, right. Holy Spirit adjustment. Mm -hmm. So when you're tempted to make a wrong decision, what happens to you? Think about it. What happens when you're tempted to make wrong decisions? You can feel your heartbeat increasing. Yeah. <coughs> you, can, you can feel a surge of chemicals that cascade through your body like the police. Sirens and flashing the lights behind you when you're driving, it's all calm and you just, you know, maybe you're talking on the cell phone or having it, listening to something on radio and all of a sudden, what's this all about? Right. 
then your body reacts. I mean, you can feel it then. So I think our bodies are kind of designed like a smoke detector, you know? And when a fire is about to hit, <coughs> that spirit of fear comes through where? Our imaginations, like a foreign invasion. So you've got to keep your armor on all the time. 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a love, power, and a sound mind. So the, the, the spirit of fear comes to do only what? To project. He always wants to project into the future. To make you feel worried about how God's going to deliver us. Well, how's God going to do it? I don't know. He's God. He can do anything. Just trust Him. So if, you, if you're not, then that adds toxicity and then releases more chemicals more negative chemicals, and they're flowing in the wrong amounts. That's what's going on here. God, it, it's not like God designed you to have wrong amounts of chemicals. You're the one that's in control of there. So staying in faith and not worrying about how things are going to work out, how you're going to pay your bills, about your health, um, any kind of difficult situations that are going on in your life or with family members. Trust God. He can handle it. You can't. It's going to put you in, in the wrong stages of stress. But he can handle it all. So thoughts, again, remember, thoughts look like, like, you know, trees. A healthy forest full of them. That's what we should have our minds look like. Should we? A healthy forest of trees. But when you think about, you know, what you think about the most grows the most. And they grow branches on those trees. And Jesus tells us in John 15, 5, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. Okay, there's a clue. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So why are you trying to do something without him? He can't be done. In other words, when you entertain and you grow toxic thoughts and memory trees, that's not normal. It goes against God's design. When you entertain wrong thinking, it goes against God's word. Our bodies have a serious connection between our minds and our spirits. And when you're entertaining toxic thinking, it's building physical realities. It's, it's, it's throwing every chemical into a place of chaos. So we've got to get smart. So if you're misfiring and you're short-circuiting, your, your body can only respond to your thought life. This is so vital to understand. Your body can only respond to what you're thinking. And so we've got all these hundreds of known diseases today that have been given names from the medical world, and they all begin to manifest in somebody's thought life. And we've given a choice how we're going to react to any events or circumstances. Because either we're going to trust the Lord and stay in faith, or we're not going to trust them. And then... We're going to accept a lie from the devil. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews 11.6 but, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we're going to have to diligently, all the time, continually press in, right? Because every one of our cells in our bodies has, has a place of an entrance, like like a building or doorways or windows, right? All the cells have a, a, an entry place. And if you wear doors open and doors close, right? Doors let people in and they let people out. Windows, you know, let fresh air in and fresh air out. Sometimes people climb through windows. That's their problem. Um, <laughs> but sometimes it smells like a good idea to open a window when you're cooking and you burn something, whatever. But so doors and windows open and close depending on the different functions that they need to perform. And our bodies, every cell in our body, they have these little receptors and it's sold at, at specific purposes. So all these cells have multiple receptors on them. And then they allow certain chemicals and certain substances um, and, and they're designated times for the designated amounts for these substances to be exchanged in your body. And research calls this um, T cell Specificity, and that's a term that explains how the, the T cells they have an immunity. And it lies in the um, it's something called the sigmatic gene rearrangement of the antigens here. 
Um, you know, it's on the surface of the T still, but you know, anybody ever have a kaleidoscope when you were growing up? Mm -hmm. Okay, think of, just think about this as, uh, as a way of explaining this. When you have a, a kaleidoscope, it's got an infinite array of, of, of different patterns with just a, got just a few colors in there. If you ever looked at it, you know, you look at the other end, there's just a couple of things in there, right? A couple of colors. But, but it has an infinite amount of possibilities and patterns, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on in your body. In much the same way the Lord designed us with this kind of process that it produces an infinite array of specific configurations from an infinite number of genes. All responding from where? Our thought life. So when we're in homeostasis, basically means that everything's operating as it should and you're thinking properly. Because the Lord designed us and wired us for love. And to be loved. So then all the receptors are working, you know, in harmony as close as, as, as they can to the way God designed us. The proper amounts of chemicals are being secreted, as they should, and, and they go in and out as they're supposed to. The doors and the windows open as they should. However, the moment we choose to make a toxic decision, a bad decision, like, that person just offended me. And then you start entertaining this, an unclean spirit of bitterness and unforgiveness. And that brings in a spirit of fear. You just open the doors and the windows of the receptors on the genes and you're bringing in the wrong stuff. Um, and, and these foul spirits come into the body and they respond accordingly. Bringing you into a neural, neurological chemical imbalance. All kinds of chaos going on in your body because you didn't respond as a child of God. Jesus gave us very good examples how to respond. So when we don't forgive others the moment we're offended, you're going to harm yourself. Matthew 18, 35, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brothers that trespass. And now think about it, your heart has got like 40,000 neurons in it, like a little mini, you know, brain. And you go, okay, I forgive him, but you don't mean it from your heart, then that message goes through your blood system, gets to your heart, and they go, Sorry, there's no congruency here. We can't comply with that request. And then the wrong chemicals get released instead. Because we're supposed to be imitating the Lord Jesus. And he gave us so many examples. So that means all injuries we suffer by somebody's words, or, 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 or some action, some deed that they did, some offense given justly or unjustly, needs to be forgiven whether you feel like it or not. Because that's the way the Lord's put this together. And in fact, you know, the Lord says, when, when you come to Him and you ask for forgiveness from your sins, what does He do? He, he throws it in the sea of forgetfulness. Because he's like the Italian guy, you forget about it. <laughs> Just forget about it. Right? It says in uh, Micah 7, 19, He will turn again and will have compassion upon us and he will subdue our iniquities, and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Well, think about it. How deep is the sea? Who's going to go down there, skin dive, and trying to get those sins back? Not me. <laughs> Papa God says, forget about the former things. Neither consider the past. He wants you to let go. Stop replaying the past. Stop replaying those past mistakes that you made. It's over. Stop dwelling on it. And what others did to you, they, they, they offended you and hurt you. It's over. Today's a new day. Today's a day of salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews 8, 12 says, For I will be merciful unto the unrighteous and their sins and their iniquities I'll remember no more. Hebrews 10, 17 says, And their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Well, if God doesn't want to remember them, why are you doing it? What are you hanging on to them for? Psalm 25, 18 Look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sin. Now, Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake, I will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us think together, declare thou, and thou may be justified. God wants us to, to, to remind him of these things. Lord, you promised. So we can remember. Not for him. He knows everything. He doesn't need us to do this. 
But see, otherwise, when we don't obey the Lord and we don't forgive and forget, we're harming ourselves. We're like that city with the walls broken down and the buildings and the windows and the doors, and they've been destroyed like some bombs have gone off. Some, you know, you've seen what happens after a big storm sometimes, you know, things, the windows are busted up and stuff. And now there's not enough protection. This is what's going on in your body. That means down to the cellular level, so that, that everything that's flowing through the, the bloodstream now has open access to any cell and can cause damage. So again, it's like an allergy, isn't it? It's just like an allergy. Because now you're prone to suffering from a reaction or a smell or something. You, know, you ate, a, um, somebody said something just triggers it. Because there's an imbalance of chemicals working from that toxic reaction to the thought life because that, that's the reality of the way your blood flows. So that means toxic stuff can enter your heart of the cell, the heart of the cell. Well, that's where the DNA is. That affects the way the genes are going to be expressed and the way that they build thoughts. See, they're all connected here. So when you entertain a spirit of fear, you're entertaining stage two of stress when you go into that. And then when you experience things like that, you're going to have interrupted sleep, your, your hypothalamus glands work in overtime because it sense danger. So it's not going to let you sleep properly. Get your sweet rest that God wants you to hear. Your, your main gland, the limbic system, is the hypothalamus gland. Often we would call it the brain of the endocrine system. And your, your hypothalamus can only respond to your thought life. I think that's very vital that we, we keep this in mind here. You can only produce chemicals in response to what's going deep within your soul and spirit. I mean, how many Christians seek an earthly doctor instead of the great physician? When, as soon as you face difficulties, what's the first reaction of most people? They run to the lesser rather than run to God. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been perishing from lack of knowledge of, of the Word of God. I mean, look how many believers suffering with various ailments. We, when we look at the church, it should be so different than the world, and we don't see hardly any difference today. Right. They're all suffering with sicknesses and diseases, and all men are trouble. And, you know, we ministered we, about these problems and health concerns for years now. And people come and tell us that you know these diseases the doctors said are incurable. What happened? We minister to them, and, and all of a sudden they're, they're healed. Glory to God. Amen. So most people just think and accept these physical problems, right? Most people just think this is just a physical thing that happened. It just you just happened to be standing in the wrong place and under a tree, and a bird and, and you know the sky just bumped on you, <laughs> right? That's not what it says. Au contraire. <laughs> See. Reconnecting with the awesome love of God changes everything. It changes everything. Healing belongs to you because it's the one part of the completed work of Jesus. He bore your pain, he carried your sorrows by scourging, you are healed. You know, we read this in, in, in Isaiah 53. And I can recall when I was suffering with heart disease over a decade ago, and I continued to meditate on what the Lord, the Lord had said, I just kept meditating on the Word of God. And then I made proclamations every time I had to take that dreadful medicine. Of course, they didn't tell me at the time, you know, it kills people too. They don't want to tell you their part. I would make too much money on it. That's right. Whatever. So, you know, every time I took the medicine, I said, I will not die, I shall live and proclaim the Gospel. Well, hallelujah, it worked. It will continue to work, right? And then I got a prophecy from my friend Eddie who told me I was going to hear a, a miracle when nobody would have agreed with that at the time. He said it. Some of you need to hold on to the promises of God and not let go. Grab hold, uh, tight grip, don't let go. God said, I mean, if your kids departed from the Word of God and you raised them according to the Word of God, they will come back. We've got to connect back with the, the joy of the Lord. That's so vital to your health. Some of you need some old joy. Holy joy. So we're a spirit and a soul and a body. I'm going to use a little bit of science to just you know, validate what God said here. I Think about it. These earthly bodies, they're just temporal places anyways. 
just a place for your spirit and soul to dwell in for now. So with that in mind, our, our brain you know, is part of the physical body. So in essence, the way the Lord designed us, so the Holy Spirit comes to guide us, our spirit and our soul. Right? The Holy Spirit is the one that does this, right? So the, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Ghost, the Father sent him in his, in, in his name. He's going to teach you all things. Bring all things you need to remember, whatever God said to you. So that's vital to understand. So it appears to me that your soul does something extraordinary because your spirit, when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ and Nazareth Messiah, should, the Holy Spirit indwells you, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not speaking of the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but in fact, rather that you become a new creature in Christ. And the Lord uses our spirit. The Lord uses our spirit as a, as a light to search those inward parts. Um, I, I was intrigued when I, I heard um, Todd White talk about um, Reinhard Bonnke had sent him to some place to speak to 9,000 um, very conservative Presbyterian pastors. And, and Todd doesn't look like you know, a very conservative kind of guy. And, and he, after he got done with his message, he turned to the, the Daniel and then Bonke and then said, why did you send me here? And they said, because we knew you would upset their minds and it would reveal their hearts. That's all I'm doing today, in a sense. Now, Jeremiah 17, 10, 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I tried the reins given to every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doing. And Psalm 26, 2 says, Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins in my heart. Right. See, we're coming into a time when the church is dividing between the true church, the supernatural church, and the superficial church. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 3, 5, Having a form of godliness, but to mind the power of that are from such turn away. Well, most people aren't turning away because it's popular, and I get to be entertained and they got all the smoke and lights, and they got the paid professional musicians, and you know, it makes me feel good because they give me a message that makes me feel good every week, and they don't, they don't have to deal with these issues. And you're walking away sick and broken down and hurting. Jeremiah 3, 33, um, 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, mm. and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. We've got to call on the Lord here. Thinking about this, so in a sense, Mind control matters because your thinking changes structures in your brain and body. Your Holy, the Holy Spirit directs us to do the right thing, and with our mind, we need to appropriate the will of God here. So then, your mind understands what your spirit knows. And many, you see, many people can quote the scriptures, but sometimes it seems that the the way people are living shows that their mind's not often believing the word of God, even though you can quote the scriptures to us. There's a term in psychology called cognitive dissonance. It's, it's describing the feeling of mental discomfort that comes from two thoughts that oppose themselves. Well, God says it very simply, that's double-mindedness, right? James 1.8, a double-minded means unstable in all his ways. So basically, the, the cog cognitive Dissonance, it, it's um, you know, like somebody that has a, a, a habit of smoking. And they're telling me, well, pastor, pray for me. Well, is that going to really work right now? How many people already prayed for you? When are you going to take responsibility for it? you got a nasty habit. You know it's doing harm to your body. And, and you persist in it. Why? Because you're not taking control of your thought life. You're just giving in to the enemy. Yeah, and there's a demon involved there. Sometimes we need to cast that thing out. We've cast out demons and they can hear me fall. We may do it again. My personal definition of cognitive dissonance is just, it's a lie. Mm -hmm. The enemy tells you a lie and you agree with it. So as disciples of the Holy Spirit, we need to speak the Spirit and truth. Worship God in Spirit and truth, right? <clears throat> mercy, grace, and love, but we've got to take responsibility and then proceed to undo the bad habits and rewire the places in our brain so we can get healthy habits. 
hobby thoughts, right? Philippians um, 4, verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And then you connect to the Lord spiritually, then what happens? Your body has to follow. Listen, I'll just tell you one thing. Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which can kill the body. That would be all the stuff you're hearing on the news. But are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this time together. We're just so in awe of you, of your mercy, grace, and love towards all of us, Lord. None excluded. We thank you for sending the Lord Jesus Christ and Nazareth to come and save us, and for the Holy Spirit to come teach us and guide us and direct us. We thank you for your, your anointing, Lord, for the Holy Ghost and the power that we can go about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the enemy. Because we know that you're with us, Lord. And if you're with us, nothing, nothing at all can come against us. And there's nobody mightier than you, Lord. We worship you all the time. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Yeshua, with every breath we take. We thank you, Lord, for, for helping us to tear down any strongholds that the enemy's built up this day. In fact, I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would come now and you would just minister to each person that's hearing my voice. We thank you for opportunities to, to exercise our faith as we go from here. Help us to reject every spirit of fear and continually walk in Christ's holy love for one another and for ourselves, and mostly for you, Lord. We ask this in the almighty name of Jesus Christ of the Israel, Messiah Yeshua. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord.